Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today I'm gonna make a scoreboard you control with your phone. This video is sponsored by Intel and for this project we're gonna use their Arduino 101 board. This is the same board that I used recently on my motion activated bike lights, you may remember that one, and on that project we used the onboard accelerometer and gyro. For this one, we're gonna use the Bluetooth that's built onto this board. This board has the same footprint as an Arduino Uno. You can program it just like an Arduino, but it has a bunch of other stuff built into it. It's got those two onboard sensors, but it also has a real-time operating system and a 32-bit processor. This scoreboard is general enough that you could use it in all sorts of different ways, but the idea behind it is really about using it for schools. This thing is small enough to be portable, but large enough to be seen at a distance. So you could use it in a gymnasium or a large school classroom, and since it's Bluetooth, you can control it remotely. All right, let's get to it. The main panel of the scoreboard was made out of a half inch piece of MDF. I cut it down to size on the table saw, and then I started marking out where everything would be. I made a two inch border on all of the sides using this large T-square, and then laid out the numbers and the areas for the team names. Each number is made up of 15 LEDs, so I just had to make a grid that would work. Then I put even spacing in between two of the numbers on each side, and then a larger space right in the middle. I made sure to circle all of the places where I was gonna drill so I didn't get confused later on. I started out with this Forstner bit and put some tape on the back of it to drill the holes. This works usually when you're doing it one time, but after a while, the tape starts to move. I can already tell that the tape is not gonna stay in place well enough to get a really consistent depth on these holes, so we're gonna try something different. I took this thin piece of stock and drilled a hole in it with this bit, and now this is gonna act as a collar. So when I start drilling my hole, I'm gonna drop this down onto the bit like that, and when the back side of the bit matches up with the top side of this material, that's when I stop drilling. The depth may not be exactly the same between all the holes, but it's gonna be a lot closer than it would be with the tape. So let's try this out. Using a drill press to drill all these holes would be the best way to do it because then your holes are always gonna be perfectly perpendicular to the surface. In this case, I'm gonna use a drill because, well, there's stuff on both sides of my drill press, so I actually can't fit such a big sheet right there. Hey, future Bob, in your next shop, make sure you don't put stuff on both sides of your drill press. Cool? All right. It took quite a while to get all these drilled, but these weren't through holes. They were just big enough for the diffusers to go in. I had to go back with another bit to drill at the center of each one of these so that the LEDs could be passed in from the backside. I also made a pilot hole and then used a jigsaw to cut up the areas on the inside of the board, and these are where the team names are gonna go. These cuts will have to be perfectly straight later, so I just got close to the line rather than trying to hit the line. I'll come back later with the router and clean them up. Each one of these openings will hold a small piece of plexiglass that has the team name on it. I had some really thin plexiglass and I just cut it down on the table saw. I pulled the plastic off one side of these and went over it with an orbital sander with about an 80 grit paper. This makes it kind of frosted. It wasn't quite enough so I ended up sanding both sides of both pieces. I laid out some simple text in Illustrator and printed it out on my vinyl cutter just to make some stickers. These are going to act as masks when I paint these panels. Obviously you can make these say anything you want, but I figured home and visitor were general enough. Once everything I didn't need was pulled away, I used some masking tape to lay over these. When you do this, it lets you pull off the vinyl from the backing and lay it onto a new surface. Then when you pull off the masking tape, it leaves the vinyl behind. It's a really nice way to make an easy transfer. It was really handy to have the lines on the cutting mat beneath this thing to help line up my text with the edges. I set the depth of my trim router to exactly the same depth as this piece of plastic. This way, when I cut out the area where the sign went, it would be just enough for that plastic to set flush with the surface. I used an edge guide here for the first time, and it made it really easy to get a nice straight cut relative to the edge of the piece. It took a little bit of practice just to make sure everything was lined up, and I had to use a square on some of the inside corners, but it ended up working pretty well. The only thing this can't do, obviously, is get out the corners, so I just used a chisel to square those up. Doing it this way made for a really nice tight fit with both of these pieces of plastic. Before I assembled anything, I needed to sand this entire surface. I made a really simple frame to go around this entire board out of 1x4s. Sometimes it can be difficult to get your miter saw exactly at 45 degrees. Make sure you do some test cuts and get it right. It makes everything work better once you do that. Once you have it set, you can cut all of the pieces in succession and you're good to go. 
I wanted the panel inset just a little bit, so I laid down some spacers underneath the board upside down. This way, when I added the frame on the outside of it, the board wouldn't be flush with the front of the frame. I used some glue and brads to put these pieces in one at a time, making sure that the corners lined up really well on each one of the miters. This next part could be done in a couple of different ways. I decided that I just wanted the letters to be lit up, but if you wanted these whole sections to be lit up instead, just put them in after you paint the cabinet. In my case, I went ahead and glued them in before spray painting the whole thing black. I didn't prime this, which would have made the paint take a little bit better on the MDF, but I just had to do several coats of black. After it dried, I used an X-Acto knife to pull off the masked letters that I put on before. This way, when the light shines in from the back, only the letters will be lit up. To make the diffusers for the LEDs, I went into Fusion 360 and modeled these cylinders. They've got a small chamfer around the top just to round over the edge, and then a small opening in the bottom where the LED sticks in. Other than that, they're really simple, it was just a whole lot of printing. After I got them printed, I had to cut off the support material on the bottom to make sure that they would fit into the openings. Then I had to stick them all in. I bought a whole bunch of RGB LEDs on Amazon, and I got them in bulk so they were pretty inexpensive. These have just enough wire in between them to make it really easy to line them up in these holes. I put these in in a very specific pattern and mimic that pattern on each one of these numbers. The pattern matters because that's how I'm going to light them up with code. Once I got them all put in, then I had to connect them together. The only reason I cut these was so that the first one was in the top left and the last one was in the bottom right. By cutting these, I just had to reconnect them, so I made some simple connector wires to connect the end of one strand to the beginning of the next. To light up the signs for the team names, I took a simple one color strip and just added some wires to the end of it. This strip has adhesive on the back of it, so once I peeled off the backing, I just stuck it inside the back of the frame and then hooked these wires up to a power supply. Now it's time to hook up the Arduino, and the electronics here are really simple. In fact, if you saw my bike lighting video, you're gonna recognize this because I literally pulled this right out of that project to use in this one. You don't need anything extra at all. In fact, since the Bluetooth is on the board, all you need is power. You're gonna have a power source that goes in here. In this case, it's gonna be nine volts. That's gonna go through this voltage converter and become five volts, and then this output will go to the LEDs. The other nine volts will go directly into this board, which takes a seven to 12 volt input. The only other connection is one data pin that goes from this board to the LEDs. That's it. I'm doing a little bit of testing here and the lights work, which is really great, but I didn't take into account the fact that these diffusion bulbs that I made were gonna actually bounce light off of each other. So when you look at these, you don't really clearly see the number that should be displayed. If you squint while you're looking at these in person, it's a lot better, but it's still just not enough contrast to make it worthwhile. Now on camera, they look like they're all lit up, but it's actually a little bit better than that in person, still not good enough. I started thinking of ways to get around this and I found one simple thing that I can change that will actually make a pretty big difference. Take a look at these over here. These two, I wrapped on the outside with black tape just to see how they would handle picking up light or blocking light from the ones around them, and they're considerably darker. When you turn the lights off in the room, they actually look a lot better. You can see with the sides of them covered, they don't pull in the light from the ones around them, and it looks a lot more like I want it to look. So I went back to Fusion 360 and printed out some black cups with clear lenses to go on top of them. I just had to take out all of the old ones, glue in the new cups, glue on the lenses, and put the lights back in. And it's pretty easy to see how much of a difference that it made. I'm really happy with the new diffusers. They're all put in and everything's good to go on the front. And so now it's time to finish up the back. All I did here was mount the electronics to this edge and I just did that with some hot glue. So in case I need to change anything, I can easily pull them off and rewire it. And when I was testing out, I found one more problem that I'm gonna address, and that's this LED strip across the top. I realized that because these letters are actually pushed on the outside and there's this little lip, that lip causes a shadow on the back of the letters. So to get around that, I've got a scrap piece of wood. I'm gonna glue it in right here, move the LEDs down underneath it so they're right behind the letters. I think that'll work out a lot better. This carries no weight at all, so I used CA glue to hold this piece in place. It grabbed really quickly, then I just pulled down the LEDs and stuck them to the new surface. At this point, it was essentially done, so I just ran some tests to make sure that the app was working. Luckily, it was. So let's talk through the code and how we connected the app. There's a fair amount of code in this project, so I'm not gonna walk through it line by line in this video, but I will put another video on my second channel where I go through everything line by line, and you can download the code from my GitHub. 
Let's talk about how these numbers are drawn really quick because that's really the biggest part of the code. Each one of these characters is made up of 15 LEDs. There are five rows of three. To make up each one of these numbers, zero through nine, I had to write down the state of all of these LEDs that matched for that number. So to display the number zero, I wrote down a list that said on, 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 off, on, etc., all the way down. That way, when I wanna display a zero on the board, I just pull up that list and then turn each one of these on or off based on the next number in that list. I understand that's a little bit confusing, but if you look at the code, you'll get a much better understanding of how this particular part of it works. The rest of the code is really just about turning on and off LEDs and connecting to the Bluetooth. All of the Bluetooth code is straight from the example code provided by Intel. Like I mentioned before, the code for this is on my GitHub and you can download it to look through it or change it and use it in any way that you want. It's very easy to change the color of these LEDs since they're RGB or to change the way things work. The link for that code will be down in the description. Once you get all the code set up on this, you have to connect it to a Bluetooth device for control. If you're really ambitious or if you have students that you need to give a project to, you can easily write your own app for any smartphone that will connect to a Bluetooth device. But in this case, I wanted to use something that was really general and accessible to pretty much everybody. I found an app online called BLE101 and it connects directly to Arduino 101 board specifically. It's a very simple app and it's made to be super general, so it's not gonna have specific score controls or anything like that, but it does have some buttons that you can assign to do certain things to the board. I simply set up six buttons, three for each side of this game board. Each one of those sides has a button that makes the score go up by one, down by one, or resets it to zero. So there it is, a really simple scoreboard that you could use for just about anything. I love projects like this that are useful, but also general enough for you to adapt and change as you need. This would work great for playing with your kids at home if you have like a game night or using it in a school for some sort of math triathlon or I don't know, anything else. That's the cool thing. It's general enough that you can use it in any way that you want. Big thanks to Intel for sponsoring this video. If you want to find out more about the Arduino 101 board, I'll have links to it down in the description. Below that description, there are comments and you should let me know what you think about this project. I'd love to hear it. I've got lots of other project videos of all types that you might be interested in, so be sure to check those out and don't forget to subscribe. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.